So welcome back to talk about another type of protection against noisy inductive kick of motors. Uh, the next type of protection we're going to talk about is called a decoupling capacitor. So there are some pictures of, of capacitors. Uh, so what is a decoupling capacitor? So kind of some words which I know are not that exciting. Um, what it does is it simply decouples uh, one part of the circuit from another. Um, so if there's a noisy part um, and then a not as noisy part, um, it helps to separate those two things. Um, and the pick really wants a nice, clean, quiet environment, um, but it has to be on the same breadboard as a motor, uh, which when you turn it off still causes spikes. Even with the snubbers, nothing's perfect in electronics, right? They're still, they're still there, um, and you take as many levels of defense as you can against them. Uh, just to mention that they're also called bypass capacitors. You'll see that name uh, used if you like look these things up. Um, they're actually quite easy to use. Um, they actually they're simply just a capacitor that connects between power and ground. So you never have to debate about where to put it. One, one leg goes into power, the other leg goes into ground. Um, so they're pretty simple. So if you just remember that alone, uh, you'll be <laughs> you'll be getting pretty far in life. Uh, conceptually, what they're like is they're just like a low-pass filter. Uh, so the idea of a low-pass filter um, is that, let's say, this VN is at 5 volts, um, and, you know, it's driving 5 volts across here. Well, the first thing that would need to happen is it would need to fill up this capacitor. I think of capacitors as kind of like, with the water analogy, they're like membranes or rubber bands, right? It's like they, they store up so much uh, pressure. Um, so the first thing is it kind of like gets it up to the, the pressure point to where it can send 5 volts through, um, and so it'll send 5 volts. Um, but then let's say you're, you know, you're happy, you're go lucky, uh, you've got your 5 volts, but then there's a dip. Um, for some noisy reason, there's a dip. Um, what will happen when that dip um, is the capacitor will kind of fill the void, right? Uh, because this will just jump to zero, um, and then all of a sudden it will continue to get that same current uh, from the capacitors like like pressure reservoir. Same way if you have a spike, um, it can help uh, absorb the spike because it's got to kind of fill up the capacitor uh, before it can go through. So a decoupling capacitor, it, it is a low-pass filter, right? I mean, that's what it does. Uh, but the idea is it takes noise out of the line. Uh, the only thing that's kind of different, um, like the reason this lecture isn't 30 seconds, is you have to know where to put them, what size to use, um, and like when they are and aren't necessary. There are typically two decoupling capacitors we're going to use. We're going to use one decoupling capacitor. Um, so let's just say this, you know, this pick is driving a MOSFET. Um, obviously, we'd have a snubber diode because we just learned about those as our first level of defense. Um, and then what we'd want is we'd want two decoupling capacitors in this situation. We'd want one um, on the power that is controlling uh, the motor. So I'll just kind of draw a capacitor in here. This one is typically like something big, uh, like let's say it's, you know, 330 microfarads. It doesn't really matter. It could be, I mean, if you had a 220, that would be just the same. Um, something that's like a big capacitor that can hold like a lot of charge for these big changes. Um, this capacitor will just go between power and ground, um, and it physically should go very near your motor. So depending on like where your motor is plugged into the breadboard, you want this decoupling capacitor preferably closer to the motor. Um, I get lazy, to be honest, and what I do is I get a breadboard, um, and I'll have my, my power supply coming from the wall, and I'll just put my decoupling capacitor like right there. Um, and then I won't bother move it. That's that's good enough. Uh, but if you want to be really technical, it should go as close to the motor as possible. Uh, interesting little sidebar. Um, most power supplies have a decoupling capacitor built into them. In fact, if you let's say you're just driving an LED and you unplug it from the wall, um, that LED will actually stay on for a little bit. That's because the decoupling capacitor inside the power supply. The problem is it's so far away that you want to add your own near the circuit. So that's one decoupling capacitor. That's a big one near the motor. The other decoupling capacitor that you'll always put in uh, will be near the pick. Uh, where I tend to put it is I tend to put it, so VDD, I know it's hard to see here. Uh, this is going to be going to your power supply. So this will be going to a regulated 5 volts. Um, and then VSS is ground. 
Uh, these names, by the way, VDD, VSS, the D stands for drain, because internally this is built out of MOSFETs, um, and the S stands for source. Um, and if you remember your MOSFETs lecture, the source is always grounded, so that's why VSS is ground. Um, and then VDD, well, it usually gets connected to power somehow, um, so we connect it to 5 volts here. This one over here is much smaller. Uh, this is typically like a, like a 0.1 microfarad. Uh, 0.1 microfarad caps are often called 103s. Um, it could be a 103 or a 104. Um, a 104 is, actually I think a, a 104 is 0.1 uh, microfarads and then a 103 is like 0 0.01. Um, honestly, you can use a 104 and a 103 interchangeably. Uh, we don't care. Uh, but you can see that there are two capacitors, um, so two places to control the noise. If you need a silly analogy, I like silly analogies, um, I think of it as like noise actually works out really well as an analogy to noise. Um, let's say you live across the street and somebody's playing um, a, a garage band in their garage, right, literally in their garage. There are two ways you could try to get them to be quieter. Um, one way is that you personally could wear earmuffs, right? So <laughs> earmuffs and so on, we'll jump there. Um, so you personally could wear earmuffs, and so I kind of see the little caps as earmuffs um, on the thing that wants to be controlled, so that's what the little one is for. Um, and then the big cap would be like a garage door, right? Like if they would shut their garage door, um, that would keep the sound out kind of like near the culprit. Um, and the earmuffs would help protect the thing that you want to actually protect. So that's why there's two. Um, and it also works out to where the different sizes are important because you can connect, catch like big things or little things. Um, if you're really, really nerdy, the type of capacitor even matters. Like you can use a, a ceramic capacitor or an electrolytic or a tantalum. I'm not worried about that. Um, we'll, we'll keep it simple, we'll just, but we will use two. Um, and that's about all the more level of detail we need. Um, so that's kind of our second level of inductive kick. Uh, so we're always going to be worried about that uh, whenever we draw circuits. Uh, come back next time, we'll talk about H-bridges.